Hello, my name is Paul Bowman. I am Professor of Cultural Studies in the School of Journalism, Media and Culture at Cardiff University. Uh, my research and teaching interests often include aspects of what I want to talk to you about today, which is based around the idea of East-West cultural encounters in media, in popular culture, in lifestyles, in bodily practices, in philosophies and ideologies. And I want to talk to you about using theory as a method of carrying out your uh, media or cultural or even journalism research. Theory can be a method because theory always implies that you are looking at something, looking at an object, a case study, according to the lens and the types of questions and what you're able to see of theory. I think of theory as lenses Different theories enable you to see different dimensions, different aspects of an issue, of an example, of a case study, of a problem. And I want to give you the concrete example of my use of the theory of Orientalism as a method of cultural analysis. So the theory of Orientalism was devised by Edward Said in the 70s. He published a book called Orientalism in 1978. And he argued that the West, Europe, well, primarily Europe, but also North America, um, Western European world conceptualized the East. Now, Said was talking about the Middle East, the Bible land, the biblical land. Um, but we can expand his theory further and lots of people have over the decades. So his theory is that the West represents the East according to regular patterns of predictable stereotypes, images, imagery that don't necessarily relate to any reality, but Westerners construct uh, or imagine the Orient, Asia, East Asia, Far Asia, India, Middle East, wherever, as exotic, as, as, as um, different, as other, as completely other to the European West. So people have said this theory is old and out of date, and simplistic in some ways, but I decided that I would explore the history of British television adverts and ask, well, is there Orientalism in them? Because adverts are quite short, punchy um, uh, texts that try to persuade and try to grab your attention different ways. And so I looked at the question of, of the construction of the idea of Chineseness. Uh, how, how in British adverts is China or Chineseness, not China, not Chinese people, but the sense of Chineseness. How is that constructed in British television adverts? So I did some research. I found the history of advertising trust archives. I spent a lot of time on YouTube and all, all the usual places looking around for the history of adverts that have involved the representation of um, Chineseness in food, in products, in lifestyles, in whatever, adverts for whatever. And I did keyword searches looking, so keywords includes China, included China, Chinese, uh, East Asia, and so on. Um, and I constructed not, a, it, I, you can never be sure if you've constructed the entire history. I, didn't, I don't know if I had every advert. In fact, I don't think I got every advert, but I got lots of adverts all the way through from the 50s, all the way through to about 2018 when I did the research. Um, so it was a fairly representative sample and I found a remarkable continuity of what we would call Orientalist stereotypes and Orientalist techniques to construct senses of Chineseness. So to cut a long story short, um, I found that Edward Said's old theory of Orientalism still exists. Um, it's, very, it's very handy for people who make adverts or films or music videos or whatever to draw on these cliches and stereotypes um, of Chineseness in constructing that sense. Now, the implications of this, well, what are they? Orientalism isn't racism, but it's not divorced from it. It's not divorced from colonialism. It's not divorced from a sense of cultural um, romanticization, cultural fetishization, cultural appropriation, um, cultural domination. There are lots of different issues. Uh, Orientalism, Orientalism is normally regarded as a problem. So as a problem, it's not far away from racism. 
So if one media environment, a mainstream media environment, you know, advertising, television advertising is still an enormous um, business. And if that is organized through terms and concepts and constructions that are a hair's breadth sometimes from racism, sometimes actually out and out racist, out and out racist simplifications and, and racist stereotypes, belittling, um, demeaning stereotypes about, about a different cultural context. And so the implications of that are, well, if these images are circulating freely and people aren't really noticing that they could be culturally, ethically, morally, ideologically problematic, then what does that say about the British media environment? Um, so my method was to put on the lens of Orientalism, click, click, you put your lens on, you've got your microscope, which is, I guess, your brain or something, and you're looking through the terms uh, through into and evaluating things in the terms of Orientalism, and you start to see that um, it's common. Now you can do this with any theory, so you could look at the same texts through a different lens. You could use psychoanalysis. You could use kind of maybe Marxist theory or some other theory, uh, Foucauldian theory, semiotics, Roland Barthes. You can use all of these, whatever you want. But theory enables you to see things that you shouldn't have been able to see without the theory. That, the point of theory is that it enables you to see more, to think more, to ask more uh, complex and specific technical questions of something, an object, a case study, a problem, an issue. It shouldn't just be the production of platitudes or the production of jargon. It should actually enable you to visualise and conceptualise something that you could not visualise or conceptualise before. So... The results of this particular piece of using theory as method um, were published in Jomek Journal, which is available free online uh, at Cardiff University Press. I think it's jomek.cardiffuniversitypress.org. Um, and the title of my article is um, From from Chop Suey to Chop Socky, the Construction uh, of Chineseness in British Television Adverts. That was published in 2020. The primary text that I drew on as my theoretical foundation is Edward Said's 1978 book, Orientalism, Western Conceptions of the Orient. Um, and I would invite you to use this as your method. Obviously, obviously, it's not the whole method. My method had to involve searching archives, organising, saying, I'm going to look at this, but I can't look at that. I'm going to draw these in, this time frame, this media, you know, obviously there are these methodological questions like how do you select, how do you organise, how do you compare one thing with another thing, where do you draw the line, you know, what's inside the study and what's outside the study, right? So that's all method, right? but that's not the overarching point. The, the, the tool that I'm using, the method I'm using to analyse whatever it is I'm analysing is always a theoretical formulation because... The theory of Orientalism is different from a Marxist theory, is different from a psychoanalytic theory, is different from the theory of Michel Foucault, even though Said took great inspiration from Michel Foucault, took great inspiration from Lacanian psychoanalysis, but different from different theories, different theories, different theories. So, you know, you bolt on, or you slide any lens in, different theoretical thing, should enable you to see more and to see more richly and to see more deeply according to certain criteria, okay? That's the point of theory. The theory is not just to produce big words and complex sentences. It's to enable you to see and think and analyze more deeply. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always interested in talk. If anyone wants to ask me any questions about cultural theory, about Orientalism, about, well, indeed about Foucault or about Marxism or about psychoanalysis or anything like that, um, you know, just let me know. But otherwise I hope you enjoy and I hope you give it a try um and good luck with it